Notre Dame gets off to a slow start uh, per, per usual, it seems. Um, Jack, Jack Cohn starts the first three series, uh, doesn't do much, walks into a few sacks. Um, I want to talk about that. Um, I, I know you were high on Cohn to start the year, and you've kind of probably come off of that a little, a little bit. Um, but, yeah, so the first three series from Notre Dame were, were pretty much, uh, you know, what we I think what we all kind of expected if Cohn was going to be the starter based on what has happened the, over the last, you know, three, four weeks. Um, Virginia Tech goes up 10 nothing. Buckner comes in, uh, scores on his first drive, I believe, um, to make it 10 to seven, has a three and out with a drop to Chris Tyree in there. Um, and then the next drive scores another touchdown, make it 14 to 10. Virginia Tech goes down the field, makes it four, 14 to 13 going into halftime. Um, and then I actually texted a few Notre Dame buddies this right after. I think that was the most comfortable halftime I've experienced this season as a Notre Dame fan. And I, and I even said them, I, I don't care if they win or lose this game. I just felt like I had some clarity. <laughs> um, and maybe we don't have that clarity anymore now that <laughs> Jack Cohn led the game winning drive slash or game game tying drive and then game winning drive after that. But um, no, it was, it, it just felt like I had some clarity there. And it was, like I said, 14 to 13, I felt good. I thought Notre Dame would probably come out and I don't know if they would dominate the second half, but they would certainly win the game. Um, and then it obviously turned into a thriller. You had, I mean, a kind of a back and forth battle. Uh, Tyler Buckner throws that pick six. Um, at that point in time, before that pick six, pick six happened, I thought Notre Dame was going to probably ride to a pretty easy uh, victory, to be quite honest with you. I thought it was going to end up being one of those games where maybe finished instead of, 32 to 29, maybe 32 to whatever the score was at the time, 32 to 16. Um, and it would look pretty good. Um, you know, but like I said, Buckner throws the pick six, then neither team can throw the football. Uh, Buckner gets hurt on kind of a, a weird ending to a, a, a pick where in quite honest, quite honestly, there shouldn't even have been a pick in there because there was a horrible clipping call by the referee um, right before that. And then, uh, you know, rest is history. Virginia Tech goes and scores on a weird third and 15 run by by Berkmeister. Uh, and, and I know like, I, I'm, I'm kind of rambling here. Give all the credit in the world to that kid. I mean, he played his heart out. He was hurt. Uh, you know, played a, played a really, really gutsy game just in general. Um, and then obviously 29-29 or 29-21, Cone leads the, you know, the Notre Dame offense down the field quite with quite ease, I might add. Um Kevin Austin makes a terrific catch on the two point conversion to make it 29, 29 Marcus Freeman makes some money with his defense holding and then Notre Dame uh, kicks a game winning field goal. And I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily say I was, I was surprised or I wasn't surprised by door making it. Um, Cause I never want to leave the um, you know, the, the game in the, in the, especially in college, I don't want to leave the game in the field goal kickers hand, or in the, in the kickers hands, but door does tend to make some clutch field goals. Um, he did it against Florida State. He's done it in his career at Notre Dame. He's he's had some weird misses here and there, and he's had some bad games just in general. But um, you know, when it when when the lights are on and the game's about to end, you know, you can pretty much count on him to uh, I think to make that kick on most occasions. And I 100 yeah. percent agree with Silas. I do need to take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, to to kind of touch on a couple of things that you hit on um, <laughs> when when first of all, actually, I'm going to save this for the next uh, for the last point. I'll end with Jack Cohn. Um, when this game got to 29 21, uh, I'm I was with you. You know, whenever we were up 21 16, I'm sort of thinking, okay, let's go. You know, at the very least, go get a field goal here, go up eight, and if we do that, I feel pretty good about where our defense is at. Uh, in terms of not letting them in the end zone and, you know, and also then a two point conversion. And then we'll probably score again, again, anyway, and win this game, something like 27, 22, whatever the heck it was. Um, <laughs> um, and I love the question that we have <laughs> on the screen right now. How many <laughs> points are two strokes worth? I, I feel like I had quite a few strokes during this game. Um, and, and then, you know, when it got to 29 to 21, Truly, truly, I thought, uh, and I don't do this very often. I really don't. I, I really thought for a hot second, like, oh my goodness, like 
Notre Dame's not winning this. <laughs> like, like this is not, this is not good. There's a slim to none chance that we're going down there getting the touchdown and the two point conversion. And as they're setting up for the two point conversion, then I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'm going to know right away they're scoring on this two point conversion. Like I'm going to see the guy break open and because it's coming out quick. And of course, when it doesn't come out quick, I just basically like lean back on the couch and just think, oh boy. And somehow, some way, um, Jack Cohn for the first time all year buys some extra time uh, for the, like I said, the first time in his life, maybe <laughs> like who the heck knows well, and, and just lofts it up. I don't even think it was intended for Kevin Austin, to be honest with you. And Austin comes down with it. Um, I think most Notre Dame fans pretty well <laughs> see the same thing there that it wasn't actually in, his intended receiver, but you know, luck of the Irish, I guess. And the last thing, like I said, I was going to end with my, my, I guess opinions or my my feeling about Jack Cohn, like, dude. Okay, we're we're what are we now? Uh, is this game six? Was this game six? Yeah. So we're yeah. five and one. All right. This is six games in, and you finally figured out how to just get the ball out of your hand quicker. Like the one of the very first plays, he threw that play on when he returned. He threw the pass to Kyron Williams, where it was the targeting, and they pick up fifteen yards on that. And I think the very next play. He gets it, looks, sees like that Josh Lug or somebody on the right side of the line is just beat and just rifles it out of bounds. I was like, thank you. Like, I've been waiting right. for you to do that all year. Like, mm. if you'd have been doing this all year, we wouldn't have been in so many second and 15, third and 15 weird situations where now the defense can just tee off. Um, and it's like, where where has this been? I, I don't quite understand some of it. I mean, I know that a receiver's not going to break open early on every single play, but uh, you mentioned it earlier, you know, there was at least one sack that I can remember that he has a clean pocket and he just climbs the pocket right into the arms of a blocked defensive tackle. It's like, what are you doing? Um, so I, I don't know. Like, it, it's just, I, I'm glad he did it. I'm glad he put that touchdown drive together. I'm glad he then also, you know, was a, a large part of the, of the field goal drive that got put together as well, obviously. But like, it's it's frustrating. It's bittersweet, I guess, is the best way to put it. It's like, could we, could this have been happening the whole time? And then we really could be just layering in Tyler Buckner, who made some freshman-level mistakes. Um, could we be layering him in a little bit more than we are rather than throwing him to the Wolves in the in the second quarter down 10? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Could, could we have avoided an ugly, ugly loss to Cincinnati? I mean, holy Moses. So... I don't know. Like at, at the end of the day, you know, I, I keep saying it, you know, maybe this, uh, maybe what we learn, maybe, the, maybe what we appreciate about this football season is how far they end up coming by, from the beginning to the end, because, you know, you, you, you see things even against, uh, even against Cincinnati um, and Cincinnati maybe is the exception, but every game you sort of see something that you like uh, that you're like, Oh yeah, I, I like that. But then it's just negated by, by just, terrible mistakes and that um i don't know i don't know so there's a lot to to pick apart here i don't necessarily know that i have all the answers uh everybody wants to talk about who's the quarterback going to be after the bye week and to to that sort of my answer is like i don't care right now i don't care like we limped to the bye week to five and one you know uh you know you're starting to find out some things about cone about buckner uh, apparently pine is not part of the future. And I mean, I, I guess if that's the decision you're making, make that decision and move forward. But wow. Like what a, what a, what a weird, weird season. What a weird game and everything's just weird. That's the best way I can put it.